No more GWRRA. No more wing ding. It's over. Dead. I'm getting away a little bit later in the day than I thought I was going to. It is almost 11 o'clock in the morning, so it's starting to get warm. And right now, here where I am at the hotel, I don't feel any wind. So we'll see what it's like on the highway. Setting up my uh, trip here. I never was able to get my GPS paired to my phone, or to my headset, I should say. I just couldn't seem to get it to work. I'm not sure what I was doing wrong. This should be identical to the 50S, but for some reason I couldn't get it to go, so we'll just have to deal with it later. looks uh, promising. Looks like the entrance ramp is right here by the hotel. Now I'm going to change it up on the way home. I'm going to just take I-20 all the way back to Dallas. But I will be stopping again at Bucky's. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. I'm not going to miss that opportunity. So it is 10:36 uh, in the morning right now, and I'm on my way home. It says I'll get home about 2:30. I usually figure in at least an extra 30 minutes for stopping to get gas and do other stuff. So this, apparently, this is the last wing ding ever. Goodbye to wing ding. No more GWRRA. No more wing ding. It's over. Dead. What do you think of that? Put it in the comments down below. Welcome to Cruise Man's Motor Vlog. If you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button down below and uh, don't forget that notification bell. So what are your thoughts about Wingding and GWRRA? I'll tell you my thoughts real quick. I really don't give a damn one way or the other. Um, I was not a member of GWRRA and I know a lot of you out there were members. And I know a lot of you out there, this is a very sad day for you. Uh, but honestly, uh, I went to a few meetings, GWRRA. Uh, I never felt compelled to join. I'm not a big joiner anyway. I'm not a group. I'm not a big group riding guy anyway. And I just never felt like, I don't know. I just, it just never held an appeal for me. I went to three wing dings. Each wing ding I went to became progressively smaller. I think the first one I went to was in South Carolina several years ago. I think they said only 3,000 people had registered. And so, you know, maybe it's time to shut it down. I don't think they really kept up with the times. Personally, my personal belief is the demographics of Goldwing owners has changed over the years, especially with the introduction of the 2018 Goldwing. This Goldwing, I think, is going to have a younger demographic, and it, I think the people that are interested in this motorcycle now uh, are, are a different style of rider. And I just don't think they kept up with the times. I think they, I think they kept trying to appeal to those old G, GL1200, GL1500 riders that have grown with GWRRA. And honestly, quite frankly, a lot of them are dying off. 
And I think that's why their attendance numbers were down. I just, when you looked at the parking lot, it was mostly trikes. And even at this wingding, I saw three trike manufacturers. And that was really kind of the emphasis. Now, Neha Cycles did have a nice large booth. And I was kind of their guest along with Big Bike Parts. And I appreciate them getting me into the trade show. But I walked around the entire trade show. And it was, it was a shadow of what it used to be. Even three years ago or two years ago when I went to the last one. I mean, traction dynamics wasn't there. Wing stuff wasn't there. None of the big... I wanted to buy a new... I was going to go and buy a new pair of riding boots. There was nobody there selling riding... There was... Uh, actually, Neha Cycles had some Tourmaster solution riding boots but I've already got a pair of those I wanted I wanted another pair a different pair I wanted to try on some different pairs there was nobody there selling apparel there was one booth selling some really cheap Chinese made riding jackets and that was it other than t-shirts and caps there was nothing there was really nothing there there were more companies selling non motorcycle related stuff than there were selling motorcycle related stuff. Half of the trade show was things like MyPillow.com and jewelry and recliners or massage chairs and all the kinds of crap. You know, that's not what I go to something like Wingding for. I can go to a home show here in Dallas for $10 and get in and find that kind of stuff. That's not what I'm going to Wingding for. I'm going there to look for motorcycle stuff. And honestly, quite frankly, I suspect, and I have it on pretty good authority, they were taking such advantage of the vendors by charging the prices they were charging for the booth space. There's no way those vendors can make any money. By the time they have to pay to bring employees, sometimes from the West Coast, by the time they have to pay for airfare or gasoline, plus they have to rent a semi, like, you know, by the time they get there and pay the $10,000 or whatever it is for the booth space, they, you know, even after four days, they can't make a profit. They're, they're basically losing money going to something like Wingding. And then they, well, you have to pay for like a $50 or $40 or $50 ticket just if you want to go to the trade show. There's no way for somebody just to walk up and say, hey, I want to pay $10 and just walk through the trade show. And even if I had to pay $10 to go to that trade show, I'd have felt ripped off. I, I mean, that's just my opinion. If you disagree with me, please put it in the comments down below. You don't have to agree with everything I say. I do. I would like to say I met some really nice people. A lot of people came up and recognized me and shook hands, got pictures taken and stuff like that. And really, and I enjoyed that. I did enjoy meeting somebody, but there was just a, an overall sense, or I don't know, maybe it was just me, but I just, it just didn't, there was no energy, and maybe that's because they said it was shutting down, and everybody was a little upset over that, but honestly, even without that, I don't know that I'd have gone to another wing ding anyway. I also question the decision to make to put wing ding at Shreveport, Louisiana in the middle of summer when it's hotter than hell um, I'm not aware of any great motorcycle riding in the Shreveport area maybe there is some and I'm just not aware of it but it, there's no way it's going to compare to Knoxville or Tennessee or North Carolina or South Carolina there's no way I mean, I've never heard of anybody from Dallas-Fort Worth saying, oh, we're going to take a big ride over to Shreveport to do some beautiful motorcycle rides. I've never heard anybody say that. So why the hell have it in Shreveport? I spent this morning working on the script for my BMW K1600 GTL comparison. It's still in my garage. I don't know when BMW is going to pick this bike up or have me return it. But uh, you can see it. There's barely room in here for both. I got my trailer back there. But uh, so anyway, thanks for joining me today. If you like this video, 
uh, please click the like button. And I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlog. And don't forget to ride often, but always ride safe.